one of the most important point which is explained to us here in this university is that our rise and fall is because of our actions if our actions are righteous noble good then our state of mind is also high and if on the other hand our actions are vicious polluted if we do sinful actions therein lies our fall so if we have now to get to a higher state of being to a higher state of living higher state of consciousness or let me say higher state of experience then i have to change my actions my actions have to be of a higher quality so that is the pivot so to say our whole life is hinged on our actions and our spiritual effort is mainly to change our behavior to change our actions so that our account of negative action ceases and we now can open a new chapter of our life and hence forward all our actions should be righteous pure holy so when we just concentrate our mind on changing our actions the quality of our actions then we find that there are mainly 16 kinds of actions which we generally do mental or physical 16 kinds so we have therefore to change to transform those actions qualitatively when for example we say behavioral transformation self transformation we tell people that in self transformation lies the world transformation what do we mean by self transformation transformation in 16 kinds of actions so therefore we have to learn those 16 arts of doing action in a proper way qualitatively in a higher way even worldly wise if you just think the kinds of actions we perform from morning till we go to bed you will find that these are 16 kinds of actions which we always indulge into and one is to stop when somebody is doing an action either it would be stopping something so where to stop when to stop how to stop when for example you are driving a car you have to learn how to stop your car when there is red light you have to stop the car you have to apply the brakes so you can get a license of driving a car provided you know the driving properly and one of the arts you must know of driving properly is to stop the car if you just bump into another person's car there will be an accident if the brakes are loose our head will break against another so we have to learn how to stop where to stop when to stop and baba says in many of the murlis stop negative thinking so this is one of the arts our spiritual life which we have to learn how to stop the question is baba says stop negative thinking wasteful thinking up to now our thinking has had no breaks or the breaks had broken down they were loose we would go on thinking our mind would be wandering why we learn yoga so that we can stop our mind when we like when we want to do it so baba says you are wasting your energy your time precious time for nothing on wasteful thoughts and you are doing negative actions these negative actions are the cause of your sorrow and suffering if you therefore want happiness one of the things you must do is to stop your negative actions and in order to stop negative actions you have to stop your negative thoughts 
so stopping is one of the things in hindi we call it rokna you can note down the hindi equivalents also they will also be useful to you in this context rokna to stop now this art of stopping or rokna stop means rokna and stop also means band karna when there is leakage you stop it so stopping is not only of a movement but stopping may also relate to some kind of stopping the leakage so stopping is also of two kinds one is stopping of leakage the other is stopping of action negative thinking is an action that has to be stopped and wastage or leakage also has to be stopped which we sometimes do unconsciously unawareingly without paying much of attention it just happens you know throughout the day we have traffic control during certain parts of the day on fixed timings we have traffic control one of the purposes of traffic control is to help us to attain perfection in this art of stopping the moment the song begins we try to stop whatever we were thinking whatever we were talking about immediately we put a stop to it baba says three dots one is this dot dot of stopping so whenever there is a song which plays at the time of traffic control we just stop at that and turn our mind towards shiv baba towards our positive thinking similarly when we just get up in amrit vela and practice meditation why we do it that is one of the reasons the whole meditation system is based on this that when you practice meditation you stop thinking of your body of your physical relatives of this phenomenal world of the matters which relate to body and matter and then you think only of the soul the supreme soul your sweet home param dham and things like that so this consists of two things one is moving your mind in a particular direction the other is withdrawing it or stopping certain kinds of thoughts if during the practice of meditation our mind does not stop negative thoughts keep coming thoughts of body consciousness keep coming thoughts of the phenomenal world also enter our mind then our meditation cannot be of good quality so therefore we have to practice again and again this art of stopping when we want to stop we should be immediately able to stop it shouldn't take much time the better a yogi the better he would have this art of stopping things stopping thoughts negative thinking wasteful thinking this is also a part of what we say mind control when we say mind control it means controlling our thoughts and controlling our thoughts relates also to our control on the negative thoughts all of us actually have two kinds of mechanism one is the inhibitory that is of stopping the other is the facilitatory you do a thing or you stop doing a thing everyone has this ability more or less now not only is it necessary to have the ability of doing but the ability of not doing there may be some impulsiveness in us sometimes some people are of impulsive nature a thought would just come like a flood and they begin to do it they cannot stop it similarly our old sanskaras now say someone is abusing me and i feel angry i feel hated towards that person the thought of hated or anger enters my mind but i have learned that i should not hate i should not be angry i should look upon everyone as a soul as a brother and i am the child of god god is kind he is loving compassionate i also must have that quality but if at that point of time i do not know how to stop this thought of anger this thought of hatred 
then it will lead me to a negative action. So not only we have to stop at the consciousness level, but also at the sanskara level. Sometimes you are not aware. Your past sanskaras lead you to a negative action. So the stoppage has to be at that level also. Your negative proclivities, your negative tendencies, your negative habits, which have been formed during your previous life, or maybe in this part of life before you were introduced to knowledge, even those also have to be stopped. So yoga has to be so deep and our practice has to be so powerful that ultimately we are able to stop that also. Otherwise what happens is that we know what we are doing is wrong. We should not do it. This is not Shrimat, this is not Maryada. We, are, we as Brahmins should not indulge into this kind of thing. That awareness is also there, but we can't stop it. We are slaves to that habit, to that sanskara, as if someone is leading us by our nose into that. So we can't stop it. This, therefore, is the quality, the art of stopping, which we must learn. And as I was saying, the second part of it, stopping, rokna and band karna, as I said, is to stop the leakage. What do I mean by leakage? Suppose I am not indulging in any negative thought. I am not talking ill of anybody. I am not hating anyone. I am not angry. There is no other evil thought. But I am just wasting my time on empty gossip. I sit with somebody and talk purposelessly about this thing, that thing, and the other thing. I begin to discuss about the political affairs, though I have nothing to do with it. I begin to discuss with worldly matters and they remotely even do not concern me. So if I indulge into this kind of thinking, it may not be negative thinking, but it may be wasteful thinking. Because I am not gaining anything by doing it. It is not bringing any benefit to me. So this leakage also has to be stopped. I make a distinction between the leakage and the negative thinking. Both have to be stopped. So this is one art which we have to learn, the art of stopping. And it has to be so much perfected that it becomes automatic. So that in the next two yugas, golden age and silver age, we have not to practice it. This is a natural way of our life. This negative thinking and leakage never happens again in future in our life. Therefore, it has to be perfected to that extent. Now, this is what I was discussing about the first. The second one is to move. Move. As for example, when I walk, I move. When I sit, I stop moving. So the first was stopping. I am writing, I am moving my pen. But I stop writing, I stop. So stopping was one of the arts. The other is the moving. All our actions consist either of this or of that. Stopping also is an action. It is a mental action. Now this move, this also, I will give you the Hindi equivalent, chalna. Chalna. Move means to chalna. And Chalna and Chalana, move, I move myself, I make others move. To move or to make others move. Chalna, the first is move, the other is Chalana, to make others move. We have to learn both. Some people know themselves how to move. They cannot move others. Those who can give movement to others, they are the leaders. They actually lead and guide others. So we have to learn both of them, to move and to make others move, chalna and chalana. So when I am discussing this second art, chalna, move, I have to make my mind move on the positive path, on the path of positive thinking. This is the area in which I have to move my mind. I have to stop it from the negative thinking. I have to move it towards the positive thinking. This is what actually yoga is. This is what actually spiritual life is. Previously, we lead body conscious life. We think of body. We are conscious of and aware of body. 
but now we stop that kind of thinking and on the other hand i think i am a soul i am a child of god and such like other thoughts come to my mind so positive thinking and baba says move on the pilgrimage of remembrance why he says pilgrimage of remembrance it could simply be said it is remembrance yoga is a remembrance baba but baba says it is pilgrimage of remembrance you have to move towards parandham from here to there move out of the body and into the soul world or into the avyakt dham the subtle world so this kind of movement has to be undertaken now and then when we listen to baba's murli thereafter has to be churning churning is also moving the mind cogitating what you have already listened to what you have understood so this is another kind of movement which baba asks us we have to engage our mind into churning of spiritual knowledge then sometimes we have to move not only to move but to move fastly baba says tivra purusharthi anyone who makes who makes very sincere and hard spiritual efforts fast spiritual efforts when the aeroplane is there at the airport it is first of all at it is stand still it is halting but then it begins to move and then it moves very fastly then is the take off stage and it goes into the air it before going into the air it moves fastly similarly we can also attain that flying stage of angels when we move fastly when we come to spiritual knowledge we begin to move we stop the old negative thoughts we begin to move our mind into churning and into positive thinking then you have to move fastly do your spiritual effort at a great speed rapid speed become tivra purusharthi and then you become angel move it so fastly that you get off and into the air that is the flying stage and i said this move also means chalana now chalana also has number of kinds into which it can be classified one is to make others move you should be so fast in your spiritual efforts that others who have got stuck up and are not moving they are somewhere stuck up into maya because of some negative thought they cannot make spiritual efforts you should be able to give them movement accelerate their movements inspire them into a higher stage into a better stage so this is chalana similarly chalana also means you are given some duty some responsibility there are people with different sanskaras different habits and you have to work with them that working relationship with them has to be very comfortable very soothing so that you can bear with them now that also means chalana because in your spiritual efforts in your spiritual life so many problems will come if you get disturbed or depressed or tense it is not chalana chalana means you let them you don't get stuck up at that so chalana also means that you let them move means to let them which in other world means that if sometimes you feel heavy because of certain circumstances you feel worried there are some tough problems in your life you can't solve them so that means you do not know this art of chalana in the face of problems how should you, you should make light of them that is actually what is meant by chalana somebody is saying something if you just become tense about it your nature is not so i mean you are not comfortable with others you cannot adjust then very often it will so happen that you again and again get stuck up and tense but your personality should be so developed that if even if you are in a group and there are very tough problems then you make light of them you should be able to smoothen your path and march on and on further and further that kind of training of our mind we have to practice and the neurobiologists the brain scientists say that 
we are not using much of our mental potential there are so many abilities in us but we are not making use of them and we have not been making use of them and as a result of that those abilities become atrophied now we can't use them if you don't move your machinery or something for quite a long time then it becomes rusty it becomes junk it does not move similarly there are certain abilities within us and service gives us those abilities those opportunities in which we can use use those abilities if we do not use our abilities then those abilities become atrophied we lose our confidence in them we lose the power or the faculty to use them so when i say move move means i should be using all the abilities which i have some people have the ability of writing but they are not writing some of the have the ability of delivering a speech they are not using that ability others can conduct some courses but they are not using that ability others may have the ability of doing some vip service or public relations but they are not using that ability so if you don't use those abilities for a long time those abilities will dry up they will become atrophied then at a after a long period you will feel you have no confidence in you and if someone asks you to do it you will say i can't do it though actually the ability is there so when i say to move and baba says to move fastly to make fast efforts it means use all your abilities for a divine cause for a noble purpose for a greater global service for the well being of others in order to change this iron age world into the golden age world use all those abilities energies powers which you have in you so that is actually what is moving this was the second art the art of moving chalna and chalan the third is to control now this consists of both the ones which i discussed earlier to stop and to move in this case you have not to stop totally you have not to move very fastly sometimes you move sometimes you stop you want to give them as much speed as you like you have a hold on them so this is what i mean by controlling controlling is that ability somebody is very angry at that time you stop but you do not totally stop you think you must tell this man but that he is wrong so you wait for that time when you have to speak to him you can control your mind otherwise there are some people who can't control their mind and they can't stop them at that moment so they burst out and the result is a kind of a big quarrel so but in this case in the art of controlling this yoga meditation is the art of controlling our mind we do not think of the world at that time and of the worldly matters our office work our homework and other things but just at that time our mind is occupied completely with the spiritual thoughts so this is the control of mind and control also means that when there are certain problems certain difficulties in your life or someone says something you can be perfectly at ease either to give weight to them or to make light of them this also is controlling somebody is saying something if you do not understand its significance if you don't increase its weight when somebody says something to me i say it has no weight his arguments have no weight now arguments do not have weight in the other sense in this gross sense but it means they are not appealing to me there, there is nothing we say nothing solid in them uh, arguments are not supposed to have some something solid as we read in physics about solids liquids and gases not that kind of thing but when i say the weight i should be able to give weight if someone who is senior to me and is saying something seriously now to this statement of that person i should be able to give weight the words are the same then at another time another opportunity another occasion someone is saying something humorously in a lighter vein jokingly and if i make serious of it i feel hurt it's not control 
so i should be able to give weight to certain things and make light of other things depending upon the time depending upon the occasion if there is seriousness i should be able to give seriousness to it and if there is non seriousness or light heartedness i should be able to take that in that light so when i refer to controlling this kind of controlling is also necessary otherwise you will find that some people are very sensitive someone just laughs and says something in a lighter tone but yeah, this person who is very sensitive he takes it very seriously and feels hurt he cannot take even a joke and when sometimes we ask a person this is very serious you must do it he does not give seriousness to it makes light of it why we are not able to practice certain things which baba says and murlis times out of number repeatedly again and again because we don't give proper weight to it shiv baba who is the holiest of the holy the almighty father and the most knowledgeable one who knows the present the past and the future and for our own well being he is saying this we are not able to give that much weight that much importance to it and the result is that we are not able to practice it so we are making light of it after all baba is our baba so if he says it then we are making all the effort to practice it in our life after all during many past life we have been doing negative what baba says cannot come within just an hour or a minute or in a day or in a month it will take some time so by giving these kinds of arguments we make light of it whereas we should actually give weight to it that also is a kind of controlling that we should be able to control our sense of judgment attaching seriousness or weight or lightness to something which is happening controlling on this according to the occasion according to the person according to the demand of the opportunity then another kind of action is to give up chhodna to give up to renounce certain things have to be given up they not only have to be stopped for some time and they have not to be moved at all but they have to be given up and one of our spiritual efforts is to give up to renounce all the evils which were there in our life sex lust anger greed attachment and so on we have to give up now those who have learned this art they are able to give it up very easily quickly and totally those who have not yet learned this art or have learned it only partially not perfectly they give up certain bad habits but they carry with them certain other negative habits they have been able to minimize them to lower their degree lower their intensity but they have not been able to totally eliminate or eradicate them from their life and this is actually our dedication when we dedicate our life to shiv baba we can do that provided we can give up what is bad in us and when we say that we are newly born we have taken a new life the past is over then it means this that we have totally forgotten our past we have opened a new chapter of our life this is possible only when we are able to give up totally withdraw totally renounce renunciation baba says is not the renunciation of your hearth and home or your job but renunciation of your mind and this is what i mean by giving up what you have given up never take it back again i say i promise to myself i promise to baba that i have given up anger if anger comes back again to me if again i become angry it means i do not have learned the art of renouncing perfectly to renounce means to renounce once for all when i have given up i have given up in worldly things when you give something it no longer remains yours you don't even touch it you say i have given it up it no longer belongs to me but in this case in our spiritual efforts these past habits bad habits come back again and again to us which is the lack of the power of renunciation to give up this is the art which we have to learn 
Now in meditation we have also to practice detachment from the body. This detachment is also giving up. What happens is why we practice it again and again? So that ultimately it becomes natural. We give up body consciousness. In meditation we practice this, I am a soul, I am a point of light. In my original nature I am pure and peaceful. I remind myself of these points of my identity so that I may be able to give up, to renounce my past wrong learning, wrong understanding. We have not only to renounce body consciousness, but all our past bad learning, wrong learning. It's very difficult to renounce learning, to unlearn what you have learnt through books, through periodicals, through newspapers, through other media, electronic media, through your friends. They have always been bombarding us with some kind of information. This soul, which is just a point, carries so much with it, so much information it is loaded with. It's very wonderful, very miraculous that a point of light, the tiniest, infinitesimal, contains so much information. Past sanskaras of so many lives and also information of this life. The end of the 20th century when so much information is coming to us every moment. It's all recorded there. To get detached from this whole false, bad, wrong learning is actually renoun renouncing. But it's a great art and it requires a lot of practice. Our full happiness Full bliss, full flowering of our personality will happen only when we have renounced it. Otherwise, these bad things are still there, hidden in somewhere, in any corner of our mind. Though we are having the new one, the positive one, the one which Shiv Baba is giving to us, but still the bad, the rubbish, the useless, the negative, which is pulling us down, is still there. So that is to be renounced. Now, this was another art, the other is to hold. The first was to stop, the other was to move. The third was to control, the fourth was to give up, to renounce. And this fifth is to hold. Now, when we listen to various points of knowledge, we have to hold them in our memory. What happens is, when the time comes for their practical application, at that time our mind is not able to recollect them. We are not able to use them. It is because we do not hold them when we should hold them. At that time, Baba says this is, a, this is like a boxing between the soul and the maya. And uh, you have to win by certain points. And if the, those points do not come, like an advocate who goes to the court and wants to plead the case of a criminal who will otherwise be hanged if he is not proved to be innocent. Then, at that moment when he has to give some references from law books and tell the judge that this man, because of this reason, I say that he has not committed the crime. If he forgets those uh, recent judgments or those points of law, and when he comes back home, at that time he remembers, oh, I should have given this point. And then this man would have been let free. But this man will be hanged because you forgot that point. This is like our spiritual effort. If when Maya attacks us, if at that time we do not remember, you have a pistol, a gun in your house, so that if someone attacks, then you are able to make use of it. But just, it is lying all the time on your table or in your almira for all these years. But now that this man has entered your house and is there to attack you, <laughs> at that time you don't know where that pistol or gun is. So the weapon is there, but you are not able to use it because that is not available, that is not at hand and you are not remembering them at the moment. So when I say hold, holding means this, that it comes to your mind, to your help, to your aid, to your use when you require it. Otherwise we study so much knowledge, listen to so many murlis, but either we forget them or they become relapsed. They are not of any use to us. Knowledge is only that part which is of use to you on proper occasion. You may have learned lot of mathematics, lot of physics, lot of, ge lot of geology, biology. But if 
when you require it you have forgotten all then it's no use so is this art of holding that you must if you are a, if you are an advocate and you have to practice law then you must remember those points of law otherwise give up this profession if you are a doctor you are practicing medical profession you must remember what disease a person is suffering from what medicine you have to give what advice you must give if you don't give you are not a worthy doctor a good doctor similarly when you practice spirituality practice meditation a yogi way of life you must remember what thing should come one what you are supposed to do so that is what i mean by saying that i must hold it in my mind similarly the divine qualities the virtues just at the time when i should have patience if i at that time lose my patience i don't hold it this divine quality is not just a mere decoration it should be there in my mind not mere academic learning but i must hold it so that when i require to be patient when i must have patience i must observe this similarly with other virtues so this is what i mean by holding then the other is sankuchit sankoch karna to squeeze to make narrow to contract so to say this is another art sometimes you expand certain things by pulling them the other is that you let them contract now this is the desires for example that baba says you must after all we have to have some desires they say as long as we live we have hopes and desires desire has to be there even to become divinized spiritualized or to work for our self transformation is also a desire noble desires have to be there but we have to squeeze them to make them into few that our previously there were so many desires but now those desires the number of desires has to be reduced similarly we have shyness some people are very shy shyness is also a quality a virtue but we have to reduce it where we have to feel shy we must feel shy because shyness enables you to give up some bad things when you feel shy if i do this bad thing if i become angry what will people say what will this brahman family say so uh, you you hesitate at that time you think you must not do so this kind of hesitation or shyness or little bit of inhibition should also be there it helps you to observe some maryadas and uh, but too much of shyness too much of hesitation too much of inhibition is wrong similarly too many desires to being very much ambitious so that we lose our peace of mind so that also is wrong we have to reduce their quality or their number squeeze them then another is to experiment to make use to make use of certain things there is a fire in your kitchen and you are making use of it to heat certain things similarly there are other things which you make use of or you experiment with baba says you should do experiments with yoga not only you should practice meditation but you should experiment with yoga do experiments of yoga not only we have to become light and might but we have to experiment with it our practice of light and white should be so much that others should see us as light when they come before us they should be able to see our aura of light they should be able to feel our powerful vibrations of peace of love of might whatever vibrations we want to give them to experience of we should be able to do it someone is very peaceless now experiment with yoga make use of your yoga to give peace to this person someone has lost the confidence and says i cannot practice purity yoga is not for me i can't take this spiritual life it's difficult for me i have different kind of habits so has very weak will power so you should be able to give with your power of yoga you should be able to strengthen his will power with your powerful vibrations when he after conversation with you after being with you for some time he should be able to say now he has 
his confidence restored, he would be able to do it. So this is what Baba says is experimenting with yoga. So that not only you have bliss and peace and love, anyone who has no love for Shiv Baba, he says, I have been an atheist all through. I was totally dead, deadly against spiritualism. I was totally in materialism. I would never thought of I am a soul or whatever. So I can't to take this kind of life. I should be able to inspire him by my love for Shiv Baba. It should be so strong. He should see into my eyes on my face and my vibrations. As if from my talk he should gather that I love, I really love someone and it should touch his heart. He should say that what you are saying is based on experience, not some academic study. And when you are saying this, I could see that you are in a different state of being. I was also feeling little bit of peace, you know. So now I can understand what this spiritual love is or what this peace is. This is what I mean by making experiments or using certain things like we use in our worldly things. The other is to postpone. To postpone. Now you will think that postponing is a bad quality. Why is this by saying to postpone things? Certain things have to be postponed. Now this is what Baba was generally using. Another art. Art of postponing. Someone came to this spiritual knowledge, met Bab Dada, and he said, Baba, this knowledge is very good. What you say is correct. But I have worldly ambitions. I want to earn money, make a lot of money. And uh, I can't be completely celibate or pure. I want to marry and lead a very worldly kind of life. So all through I have been yearning for that kind of life. And now that I am thinking of it, you say that I must observe purity. Baba, everything is fine, but this I can't do. So, Baba would say to him, All right, if you cannot observe brahmacharya or purity for the whole of the rest of your life, can you do it for the next two years, for three years? Can you postpone your marriage for two years? He will say, For two years I can postpone, Baba, that's not difficult. If you say just, For the whole of my life I can't become celibate. But if you just want that for two years, I should wait. Okay. For love of you, I can wait for two years. Now when he practices brahmacharya for two years, after two years he will not say, Baba, I want to marry. Because now he has tasted the bliss of being a pure person. So this kind of postponement, if any bad thought comes you are in your mind, postpone it. I will do it after some time. You are getting angry. You say, all right. Not today, after about, say, tomorrow or day after, I will talk to this man, you see. And by that time, your anger will have gone and you will be a wiser person. So postpone, this kind of postponing. If some good thing has to be done, don't postpone it, do it immediately. Because later on, you may think, I don't want to do it. You may change your mind. So good things have to be done immediately. Shubham to Shigram, they say in Sanskrit, the good thing must be done immediately. And the bad thing, it is better to postpone. So this is another art of spiritual life. And as I was saying, for good things, Baba gave us the slogan, Now or never. Now or never. Don't even say, from tomorrow I am going to do it. Not from tomorrow, from now I am going to do it. Always apply this slogan, now or never. Then another art is, to what I should say, like the rivers go into the ocean, into the sea, they merge into the ocean. So you also, if there are certain things, they also, you can have them in their mind without they, they, they affecting you. That kind of thing, so that they can merge in your thoughts. This kind of thing. Someone talks ill of you, of both of them, if you are not affected by them and you just listen to them, you see, they go into your mind, through your ears they come to your attention, but as the rivers go into the ocean without the ocean appearing to be getting very high in level, you know, 
that sort of thing should happen in your life you will meet many persons who will praise you so much so don't get puffed up don't feel egoistic because you you have to think that this, these are the qualities which baba gave you it is baba's whatever is being done through you you are just an instrument you have to observe humility in your life others will find fault with you they will point their finger at your shortcomings that you are doing this thing wrong that thing wrong so if you just listen to them and do not you see if it does not merge in you then you may feel disturbed depressed and you would feel of sometimes perhaps giving up that good action you will say i am not perhaps a worthy instrument a better instrument so therefore i won't do it in future you will get disheartened you will have a defeatist feeling so if you want to remain above them then let anybody sing the praise or let anybody abuse or just talk ill of you or criticize you comment negatively on you you don't bother about it uh, what will you what proper word you would like to use for it this kind of thing that so many things will happen in your life but successes will come failures will come and you must have equanimity i mean equilibrium balance no disturbance but that is possible only when your mind is so broad so deep it can contain it you see if a glacier is there it can contain it if a mountain rock comes into you it you can your mind can contain it your mind is so deep so wide that it can bring anything may come into it it remains unaffected in hindi we call it samalena samalena we can contain it our mind can contain it without losing its contentment without losing its equipoise like baba is sarv shakti man he is almighty he is not affected by any of these things some people are totally atheist and they have been showing using such a rough and disrespectful language about god condemning him there is no god it does not affect him and some people have been praising god without understanding god bhaktas without knowing god properly and their praise also has been some kind of a calumny some kind of a you see actually disrespectful thing about baba about god for example they have been saying god is omnipresent and baba says i am not in cats and dogs what they actually meant perhaps was the praise of god do actually it means defamation of god so baba is above both these he can contain all these samalena when your friend says something to you out of anger you don't mind it perhaps not to mind it is proper you see this is the proper word not to mind it he the praise or the opposite of it you don't mind it you, you remain unshaken in the face of both of it you can absorb it so to say like the sponge which absorbs it if you squeeze it the water goes out if it full it's okay like that spongy quality you can say the short comings of others and this actually enables you to adjust with others you can't otherwise adjust unless or until you have this quality then another is to glorify we have to glorify shiv baba similarly in your life also when you talk to somebody these are the two things one is that you talk good about some people some people are in your good books and you begin to praise them dadi ji oh dadi ji is like an angel shiv baba shiv baba is so kind so loving so when you just uh, in your life mix with people talk to people and discuss certain things and even when you think in your thought one of the elements of your thinking or one of the actions which you generally do is the glorifying others something you glorify either it may be a thing or maybe a person you are glorifying but in this case to glorify shiv baba now this is the art of spiritual life if someone says you are you are a good instrument and you are doing good thing suppose someone says dadi ji is a great leader she, uh, during her uh, period of taking over charge of this institution 
so many centers have been opened the service has so much flourished so many people have got the message so on and so forth but what will dadi ji say it is all baba who is doing it in a vague form i am just an instrument and it is with the help and cooperation of all of them that this thing is happening it's not because of me alone but it is a collective effort and all under the guidance of shiv baba so when someone talks brightly of you mentions you or mentions merits of you then you must point out point towards shiv baba and say you must glorify him don't accept that glory for you accept that you must mention it for shiv baba and when we do some actions always either we are happy to do it or we do it as if we are under compulsion to do it or we do it with some kind of a hesitation whenever you do something there is some kind of a feeling with with that action which goes in your mind it is not that you do it without any kind of a feeling somebody asks you to do something you say oh sure i'll be pleased to do this and you feel happy to do this and sometimes you face a sorrowful face when somebody asks you to do it you think it's a lot of burden somebody has given you without getting your permission and uh, you perhaps are not willing to do it but you think under these circumstances uh, you don't feel happy to do it but you do it you see but in this case the art of spiritual life is that you do things gladly and enjoy them since you have to do thing if you get that negative feeling that feeling of sorrow that feeling of compulsion they become a burden on you they very badly tell on your nerves they feel you fatigued they drain your energy if on the other hand you enjoy them then you get that quality your life qualities enhance you become a better person especially in regard to the service which is related to yagya suppose the teacher dadi ji someone asks you to do some service of yagya now you may feel that uh, there are certain other things also which you have to do so if you do it for a good cause some of them do it gladly others do it with great reservation hesitation with a great thinking it a great burden and uh, not willingly voluntarily as if under some pressure but still they give some money they give some donation but this makes ultimately lot of difference in their personality development as well as the result of their action if you do something gladly not only it makes you a better person it gives you happiness and you become generous philanthropist because you give voluntarily for good causes it becomes a good quality a virtue in you and if you give it under some burden under some pressure then it means you are a weak person that you are being pressurized by others you accept pressures you you cannot stand pressures that means you are weak will power so it changes your whole perspective your attitude towards life so if you want to make some contribution in kind of action in form of action or money or ideas or in any other form do it gladly with heart and soul that will give you many benefits and when you do this suppose someone gives one indian rupee for a good cause but gladly another man gives 1000 rupees but under compulsion now this giving of 1 rupee gladly is more than 1000 rupees under compulsion because his good will is there good vibrations are there for a good cause not only money is required but your blessings your good thoughts your vibrations your mental cooperation is also required so that is also which you are giving along with the money that has much more meaning therefore whenever you do something for yagya yagya service physical service suppose you give one week course you don't have the time uh, for that purpose but somebody says that is the only time available to him so you say okay i will try to find out time and be with you at that period so always when you give the course you are under the feeling that this time does not suit you 
But since this time suits this person, therefore you have to find out this time. There is no other way. As if you are doing under a compulsion. So not only you are giving the knowledge, along with that knowledge, you are those feelings, those vibrations are also being conveyed to that person. That person is also not very happy because you are not happy. If with the knowledge you give a happy feeling to that person, oh, why not? If you just are able to get this knowledge, become transformed and become an inheritor of Shiv Baba's property and have a link with Shiv Baba, uh, I will feel very great. You are my brother. I, I, I can do this for you, you see. If that is the feeling, then that person gets this feeling and uh, additional value is there along with that knowledge which will also influence this soul. So, your action should reflect that happy feeling. Otherwise, mentally and physically we become sick and the person whose service we are doing or for whom we are doing also become sick. You know. Along with the knowledge you are also passing on sickness to others, infecting others, so to say. That should not happen. Whenever you do any kind of service, suppose we say there is a procession tomorrow. Will you join the procession? I say, but my legs are aching and I don't feel like walking. But if I don't go, they will say, this person was sleeping in the room and uh, did not join the procession. So, I have to go. You may walk short distance, okay. You may not even just join the procession for a long walk. Just stand at the gate and in the, when the procession starts, with a happy feeling say, like this, you know, you just send them up. That is better, rather than you feel as if you are dying out of compulsion. As if somebody has put a burden on you and you have to do it, otherwise you are teacher, you are colleagues. And if the report goes to the seniors, this person was sleeping in the room but did not do this, you know. That kind of feeling should not be there, whatever you do. Because ultimately in Satyug, all of us will have a happy personality. Baba says, be holy, be happy. This is the slogan given to us. So if you are doing something for holiness, without happiness, then that will not be Satyug. Satyug will be there when holiness and happiness are combined together. Similarly, when you make these efforts, you, uh, any action which you do, it should reflect your gladness, your happiness. When people come here, more than they benefit by the speeches which are delivered from this dayas, more than the messages which are they given, they see the happy faces of people serving here. And they say, oh, they are doing so voluntarily with love, lot of the care they give us. And uh, no one feels fatigued, no one feels tired. And there is a smile on their face, totally relaxed, we see them. And when they see this, this is the practical glorification of Shiv Baba and of the knowledge which is being imparted here, because the result is there, the practical application, it is on the face, written largely on the face rather than in the notebooks. So that is what actually carries the meaning. Even in other, otherwise, whatever you do in your life, don't do like with your face as if something uh, is aching you. Always feel, ha ha ha, feel happily do it, you see. With pleasure, yes, why not? We generally say, I will be glad to do it without being glad. It is just a formality. But our heart should really be glad. That is the feeling. And the other is, whatever you do, do it with concentration, with focus. Even small things, those people who do it with concentration, full effort, mental as well as physical. Concentration not only of the mind, but all your energy, put all your energy into it. Then you attain high class success. And there are so many consequences of it. If you attain high class success, full success, then you feel encouraged. For the future also it builds up your confidence that you are able to do it. You go from success to higher success. If once you fail, it gives you disappointment. And then next time you feel hesitant to do it. The, the reason is that whatever you do, you do half-heartedly. Don't do half-heartedly. Do it with full heart, do it with full concentration. And yoga teaches us this concentration. 
just as our yoga consists of the art of stopping art of moving art of holding art of controlling all these are there in meditation if you find all these arts which we are using in meditation also meditation is enhancing all these arts which i just mentioned 16 and similarly this that when you do it with concentration yoga gives you concentration and the result is when you are writing you are doing with concentration when you are cooking you are doing with concentration not that you are burning your finger or burning what you are cooking or cooking what you are burning but you are doing it perfectly whatever you do so with concentration and what is yoga yoga is attention 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 on shiv baba attention on your own real identity attention is on param dham and that full attention is called concentration so whatever you do don't do it with a in a haphazard way in an unplanned way or inattentively lazily but do it with earnestness in a planned and organized way and with full attention to it then you will attain the result and people will have confidence in you not only you will have confidence in you others will also have confidence in you and whatever is the important thing to be done with responsibility they will give it to you assign it to you they will say give this to that person if that person accepts it he will do it meticulously well we can assure you from our experience with that person whatever that person undertakes does it perfectly well you can totally depend upon that person leave it to him so that is a great thing not only you are satisfied others are also satisfied and baba says you have to attain these three certificates you should be satisfied with yourself others should be satisfied with you shri baba should be satisfied with you if you are satisfied others are also satisfied shri baba has no reason to be dissatisfied he will also be satisfied he will when you surrender to him he will also surrender to you that is the equation so whatever you do do with concentration with attention otherwise don't do it you see it is better not to do it because not doing is better than doing in a wrong way you are spoiling the thing don't spoil it some people when you when you give something to them they not only not do it they spoil it and you say baba in future i am not giving it to you i learn a lesson you spoil things if you had not to do it you should have told me earlier you can't do it you have no time you know there are some people you give them some work to do they will not do it at the proper time they will make excuses this thing happened that thing happened other things happened they give you so many explanations you are wanting the work done not the excuses done you know not all those kinds of explanations and so many classes and sub classes of explanation you will not be satisfied with those explanations but the work which is done work has not been done only explanation has been uh, you see thought out as to when this question is made what should i reply this is now how people will be satisfied thing has to be done so this is building up the will power when you do practice of meditation this again is will power nothing can enter your mind you are decided you will think of shiv baba only when you sit in meditation the very first thing is you prepare what is the preparation the strong will power i will not think of the body i will not think of the world i will think of shiv baba if you sit resolutely with this kind of strong will power nothing no other thought can enter your mind and only shiv baba will enter your mind my most beloved one i want to talk to shiv baba all others get out you see no one is required at this moment the important thing to be talked about is a very serious matter you see i have to talk to shiv baba no one can enter please let me alone for this time when somebody sleeps he puts a sign outside don't disturb sleeping you see so when i am in meditation that that kind of thing i am in my meditation i have an appointment with shiv baba the greatest appointment no one can enter like that and the will power is the most important thing you cannot do anything great in this world unless and until our will power is strong is a must so don't i mean be shaky whether i will be able to do when you ask some people to do this they will say i will try what do you mean by try you see you will say surely i will do it 
you see that strong will power makes the better that half of it is already won when you think it is done it is done well begun is half done they say so that has to be there with concentration and will power and another is intention your motive what is most important behind all the actions is your motive why you want to do it some people suppose want to donate it donate money for a good cause they want to donate it not thinking that they should donate it's a good thing they must donate that it comes from the depth of their mind that yes i have lot of money i would be happy if it is used for this purpose not because of this but because others people will say look this man how generous he is he is a great philanthropist i will earn a good name people will mention by name among themselves when they sit that this person always helps so half of my money i am spending on my publicity it means i am not donating for a good cause not i mean with that kind of motive my motive half of my motive is moth eaten it is because i am thinking i will earn a good name fame in the newspapers on the marbles my name will be written or on some name plate or it will find mention from the stage such and such person has given this much money you know or people will clap hands offer me garlands bouquets saying he is a great man he helps in all these noble causes you know so that means i am spending on my publicity advertisement it's not for a noble cause so what you do what is your intention is it for the well being of all for the greatest good of my brothers and sisters the world over so that others may be happy baba has given this to me i share it with others that should be the feeling that is the real charity baba says the real generosity that is one of the best qualities which shiv baba has shiv baba is knowledgeful if shiv baba were only knowledgeful peaceful blissful loveful and almighty without being generous we would have all died start you see because we would not have been able to get knowledge peace light might whatever he has we have it because he is generous he gives it he says children all my prop all my properties for you is for, i have come to give you you even did not know that i i would give you i have come to give you so this disposition this personality trait of sharing with others giving to others what is the difference between satyug and kaljug golden age and iron age the people in golden age give devta devta means those who give and in iron age in satyug like this in iron age like this only difference they say in sanskrit somebody said what is the difference between golden age silver age and the other two ages he said in golden age people said you am you am why am you am yours is yours mine is also yours out of love everyone will say yours is yours rest assured but don't think mine is mine mine is also yours you can use it whenever you like don't think since it is mine it is not yours mine is also yours you know where there is love you always think like that my everything is for you so that was in golden age you am you am why am you am yours is yours mine is also yours and in so also in silver age and in copper age they said you am you am why am why am yours is yours mine is mine don't touch mine you see this is justice previously there was love now there is justice justice means you have your own i will have my own you see you can't touch mine i can't touch yours so each one has one's own and in iron age you am you am vayam vayam you am vayam mine is mine yours is also mine <laughs> so it has become the opposite way in iron age this is what is what is happening giving that charitable disposition it is all for you i will be happy if you have it you see that feeling of happiness when others have it even if you are deprived of it even if you don't have your own share that kind of thing that kind of attitude is what will bring golden age 
so your intention your motive whether you are doing something out of jealousy somebody is donating 101 rupees you say i will give 201 rupees why you want to beat this man out of jealousy you are giving 201 rupees not because you want to be more generous but because you must be considered better than this person you know it is out of jealousy rivalry so what is the motive of your actions not only the actions have to be controlled actions have to be stopped or moved or changed as i said earlier but our motives our intentions have to be genuine divineized spiritualized and so also our sthiti our mental stage our spiritual stage baba says don't it is better don't do anything in a body conscious way first of all set your stage properly be soul conscious when a person comes you begin to conduct one week course to give that first lesson to this person don't begin to speak just all at once sit in meditation be silent for a few minutes when you feel that now you are soul conscious you remember shiv baba you love him then begin to speak you see like when you when when the doctor gives the injection first of all sterilizes the needle then gives it. first of all you must practice meditation you begin to tell others that the identity is of a soul without yourself realizing that being in that state so first of all is our stage our mental and spiritual stage that i should be stabilized in my spiritual consciousness i should have my link with shiv baba then begin to do and baba says when early in the morning when you get up when your eyes are first open you are still in your bed you have not come down from your bed your eyes are just open you first of all think i am a soul the very first thought who should enter your mind it should become natural to you i am a soul a point of light and think of shiv baba think of love, have love for him and then put your feet down from your bed then begin to do actions only afterwards your mental stage is the first which you must do thank you om shanti